Hi, I'm Sarah from Milk Coming. Such a pleasure to be able to speak to you today. How are you? Good, how great. are you? Thank you. Great, great, to, great to chat to you. Maybe we can kick off with a brief introduction to this incredible documentary, Everybody. Um, what can people expect when they watch it? I think people can expect to learn quite a bit, um, regardless of what base of knowledge they came in to the film with about the intersex experience, about the ways in which our gender binary isn't uh, all it's cracked up to be, and um, the fantastic work that a group of young uh, and growing um, intersex activists are doing globally to advocate for education, to advocate for their own rights, and to advocate for human rights generally. Maybe, Julie, you can give us, you know, a bit of a background about the, about the genesis of the project, because I know you've worked on other documentaries um, on RGB, um, Julie Childs. Um, but how did you come to this topic and, and what compelled you to want to make it? Yeah, um, you know, I came to the topic uh, through an archival story that appears uh, in the kind of buried within the film. But um, what really wanted made me want to make it was meeting Saifa and uh, his colleagues, uh, Alicia and River, and seeing really the incredible work they're doing as activists, but just like hearing their stories. Like I'm a storyteller and when someone tells your story and it just kind of jumps out at you, just, you know, someone who's really been through some stuff and yet come through with uh, just so much spirit and and so much beauty. Like sometimes when you're in a, interviewing someone for a documentary, you're like, hmm, how am I gonna build this into a story? And it just didn't feel that way when I was talking to Sasaipa, Alicia and River. I was just so moved and fascinated by everything they said. And I knew that uh, audiences would be as well. And Saifa, to bring you into the conversation, I mean, um, what did you feel when, you know, you were first approached, you know, do you want to be on board with the project to be involved in this documentary? Um, I mean, certainly from, from where I'm sat, I feel like I've not watched a film that broaches this subject in the way that it's been shown here. So it must have felt a really exciting project, but maybe intimidating at the same time. I feel like I've had my share of media experiences. Like I have um, given interviews and been on smaller sort of documentary projects. Um, but I think what made Julie a bit different is that when she approached me, you know, she, even though she will not cop to this, but, you know, she came with some humility. Um, she came with some um, degree of uh, experience and knowledge about intersex issues. Um, and, you know, she was very gracious to sort of let me see some of her previous works. Um, so I think, yeah, I, I, I think she seemed very relational. Um, and for me, that feels important because as an activist, as a researcher, I'm about relationships. And I think there, there was some synergy there. And, and for you, Judy, I guess maybe it was significant that, you know, all three of your subjects are also activists. So there's already some groundwork that's been done there. Perhaps you're not dealing with, with somebody who's, you know, telling their story for the very first time um, and, you know, kind of giving a platform as well to the work to the, the three of you've been doing um, feels like another really integral part of, of the film. Yes. I mean, first of all, I kind of feel like this film, to a certain extent, is just about the power of activism, like both the external power, how activism can make changes in the world and in policy, but maybe even more so the internal power of activism, how advocating and fighting for something that's important can actually be good, good for someone's own soul. And that certainly was the case. Um from what I could see with Saifa, Alicia, and River. You know, I also kind of wanted to choose activists who were out there talking vocally about their own stories to maybe be a little bit of a buffer of a potential problem, I could imagine, of the difficult or painful aspects of telling one's very personal stories. I actually didn't want anyone to be telling the story of their own body and pain and trauma for the first time in 
our film like I wanted. <laughs> I, you know, I just and and you know, the, the, you know, the, the intersex activist movement is really growing these days, and a lot of the people in the movement are quite young. I stayed away from the very young because I I know that putting someone in a documentary puts them in a somewhat vulnerable position. So mm -hmm. I wanted people who had the experience and maturity to kind of be handle it. And that's ethical. That's very ethical. And there's so many different elements to the documentary. It's so beautifully kind of put together. Um, but, you know, it does feel like, you know, a core part of it is also education. And did you feel that that was like almost one of the first hurdles to get over? Because, it, it, you know, there's so much misinformation, but also ignorance over topics like intersex, you know, people not understanding even to begin with what it means. So there's a, you know, a job that the documentary had to do first and foremost, just to kind of, you know, explain the topic before then even be able to get into to, to the, you know, the nitty gritty of it. Yeah, I'd say we were more expositional in this documentary than anything I've worked on before, just because I did understand how, what a low threshold of knowledge in general we're dealing with. So I kind of thought almost the very first thing that we want in the film is to have our three participants in a very basic way explaining what intersex is, because, you know, normally in a documentary, you throw someone into the story and they're gradually being able to figure out. But I didn't want a viewer to spend the first 10 minutes of the film being like, what is intersex? Or like, you know, getting out their phone in the theater and like Googling what, what does intersex <laughs> mean? <laughs> And, and and for you, you know, being part of the documentary and what were maybe some of the, the most challenging parts, but also the highlights, I guess, having having to go through that process and explain things, go back through your past. Um, was any of that, you know, very painful? But then there's also so much um, joy that's brought out both in your interactions with the other subjects, um, but also looking at aspects of your life. So, you know, it's kind of in, put in, in balance, those two things. Every time I see the film, I think what sort of, kind of touches my soul more than anything else is to see my mom, you know, um, because my mom is no longer living. Um, so I think it's always, whenever I have seen, I've seen this film a few times, every time one of the opening scenes comes on, I see my mom holding me. I'm just like, oh my God, you know? Um, but I think like for me, what came to mind um, with your question was sort of, um, I think one of the highlights in filming with Julie um, was when we were in Berlin. It was so fun, you know? Um, and it was like such an adventure. And I just totally was like, Julie, there's this exhibit in Berlin, you know, we should check it out. It's an intersex exhibit. It's gonna be so rad. And Julie was like, I love Berlin. And we were there, you know? Um, and so I think, yeah, I think Julie's commitment to really sort of just getting in there, you know, getting her hands dirty, getting her feet dirty, to really sort of be with um, intersex people, um, I think was, I don't think momentous is the right word, but I think it is just really, for lack of a better word, just touching. For you, Judy, you know, as we were saying there, you know, putting into balance sort of showing the reality of, of what some people have been through, you know, the, the medical procedures, um, you know, not being treated properly by medical organizations, you know, as well as society. Um, and, you know, some of the clips, particularly of that Stranger Than Fiction case, but also that group of 10 people that had come together in California, that amazing sort of old footage, of people sharing their stories. Um, but then you do put it again into balance with sort of this look to the future that does feel hopeful. It does feel like the needle has been pushed and there is a brighter future, hopefully, for the next generation. Yeah, I mean, I'd say spending time with Saifa and the other activists for me was just an ongoing process of revelation. Um, and I tried to put aside my expectations of what thing of what someone else's experiences were and just listen to their own description. I mean, you know, I had, Saifa mentions us going to Berlin together and I had thought like, oh, you know, you're going to show up at that exhibit. You're in it. You're looking great. You're going to be like, yes, this is like so cool. 
And then the conversation um, that Saifa had with the two museum curators afterward, actually, your experience was quite mixed. It's like, you know, you're taking the sum total of this in and saying what I'm seeing here is decades of pain experienced by so many people. And it just makes my heart hurt. It was like the uh, like that scene was supposed to mean something totally different. And that was the experience that Saifa was having. And it was profound. And so that's what's in the film. I think you see it all. You see some moments of like, hey, I'm looking pretty good. And that, that's a great God. But you also but you also see the pain and like, you know, life is a mixed, complicated mix of experiences. Come on, Julie. That's real talk. That is real talk. So, and ultimately, what do you hope people take away from watching the film? And have you already, you know, been able to show it in lots of different places? What have those initial reactions been like? Have they been what you expected? Well, you know, I feel like everyone who in my network, people who I don't even know, people who have seen the film have been really touched um, and really moved by the film. Um, and I hope that the film gets to as many people as possible. And I think I also want to bring up just like how um, when the film first came out in the U.S., how there were people, really hateful people, who like literally, I guess it was the IMDb ratings, mm -hmm. like literally just trashed the film just because it was talking about yeah. gender. And not having seen it. Just, not seen yeah, it. Right. right. Just like, not I don't like this. <laughs> right. You know? And so I think, there are going to be people who are going to be resistant to it. But I feel like for the people who are open, who are curious, um, who want to like really hear like human stories that, you know, because we're intersex, but we're still human. Right. And these are stories that people can relate to. I think people will definitely, I feel based on what I've heard and in my own self, I think people will be moved. Future. Yeah, I mean, certainly we've seen, I mean, as I, when the trailer of the film first came right. out, we put it out on TikTok. It got unbelievable number of comments, uh, about two thirds to three quarters were positive. But the negative ones, the comments were often aimed at you and Cyphalicia. The comments were basically variations on, I don't believe you exist. Like that was like, okay, so for if that's your attitude, I don't think you're gonna, I don't recommend seeing the film. I don't think you're gonna get anything out of it. Um, I'm here to tell you that Saifa ex exists. That's, <laughs> I'm as, real. as you can see, but, um, but, um, you know, other than that, the, the feedback from intersex people has been incredible. Both people who were out as intersex and people who are not, including friends of mine who came out to me as intersex after having seen the film, which was an intense experience that I had not anticipated. Um, and from others who knew very little about the issue, but whose basic attitude was just like, I'm grateful that I met Saifa and Alicia and River. Cause like these people are made like meeting new people and like you know wh whose stories surprise you can feel great and people have ha there's just there's been a lot of like wow what a great opportunity to learn about something i didn't know about and meet some very interesting cool people and that's almost kind of um testament to the power of film of cinema of, of kind of humanizing these issues that gosh you know if you ever open twitter it feels like you know any sort of debate is just diminished to, you know, completely black and white, no nuance. Um, and, you know, it's just not helpful. Whereas cinema can kind of cut through that in a, in a really powerful way. Um, well, thank you so much for your time. And I really can't wait for everyone else to have the chance to see this incredible um, and heartwarming and really eye-opening documentary. Everybody, thanks so much. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Bye, Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.